Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to tell you about my experience using the Lomography Simple Use Camera. This camera is made much like disposable cameras that are intended for single use. Basically, it's a plastic camera body with a plastic lens and comes with film pre-installed. I got mine this past Boxing Day from Urban Outfitters because it was on sale. But you can also order it online through Lomography's website. So like I said earlier, most of these plastic cameras are meant to be for single use, meaning you finish however many shots there is for the camera and you take the whole thing and give it to your film lab for development. Lomography claims that you can reload this one at your own risk though, but you can't get warranty once you open the camera anymore. There are different types of this camera, I got the one that comes preloaded with Lomography Color Negative 400, which is their standard ISO speed film. You can also buy one that has their false color films like the Lomochrome Purple, which shifts your photos towards um, purple. Okay, so this is the camera. Of course, it feels very plastic and light as a feather but not as flimsy as I thought it would be. It comes with these colored flash gels, so you can experiment with changing the color of your flash. Uh, it comes with cyan, magenta, and yellow gels, which you can combine to create other colors. Uh, like say for example, yellow and magenta will make red. At the back, the camera has instructions on how to use it. You wind the film using the winding knob at the top right corner, and once you can't wind it anymore, then that means the shutter has been cocked and ready to fire. And you need to be about 1-2 to two meters away from your subject when taking a photo. So I took the camera out for a walk here in Calgary. It's the middle of the winter, so it's cold. But at least here we get lots of sun. Funny story, this is the first time I'm using this for myself, but I actually gifted one of these to one of my friends during his birthday. Um, the thing is, the flash on this camera doesn't auto-charge, meaning you have to press this button and wait for a red light to light up before you can take photos. I showed him how to do it, but I guess people get drunk and most of his photos turn out blanks because he didn't use the flash. Here you can see that the vignetting is more pronounced when used during daytime. Here I tinted the flash red just after sunset, and this technique is courtesy of negative feedback. It's a cool effect for sure. But you can also not fully cover the flash with gels and you can get these kind of gradient color effects. And this is my cat, Misha. A few technical specs, this camera's lens has a focal length of 31mm and a small aperture of f9, and the shutter speed is constant at 1 120th of a second. Uh, since it's with a 400 ISO film, this means you should ideally use it in daylight, but you can also use it indoors using the flash. One of the things I'll remember to do after the first time I use this is, is to make sure that my fingers are not blocking part of the lens. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in some of the photos, you can see that the lens has a pincushion distortion, which gets worse in the corners, but it's not too bad. Color-wise, it's nice. Lomography 400 is my go-to film for everyday shooting, but I must say though that I do post-process my photo scans, and here it is for your reference unedited. I just add some saturation and brightness. I usually overexpose my film by one or two stops to make it brighter, but since this camera doesn't really let you play with the settings, I had to shoot everything as is without exposure compensation. This also means that you'll have to watch your light carefully. I made a huge mistake of shooting this in the afternoon, so the sun was setting and I lost a lot of light. I mean, I didn't shoot it in total darkness, it was kind of like the blue hour, but still, a lot of my photos got underexposed. And 
and I tried to recover some of the scans in post-processing, but it's just not good. I mean, I even used the flash when I took this photo. This one is still kind of cool though. I like it. So yeah, after your 36 shots, you can open the camera and take the film out for developing. You don't need to wind it at all, the film will be back inside its protective canister. Um, you just need to wind it a little bit. Um, but you don't have to worry about getting light leaks or anything like that. And since I had some hiccups using this camera for the first time, I decided that I would reload it with new film. I used the same Lomography Color Negative 400 to keep the experience somewhat the same. And I just basically went online to find some resources on how to reload the film, but I guess I will just show you how I did it. So first you open up the camera, and to reload the film you set the counter back to E. To load the film, I pulled out a bit of it by pulling on the film leader. I was counting up to maybe 21 squares, but you probably don't have to do it. <laughs> and then I slid it into position in the camera, um, and then I pressed on the film towards the take up spool just to ensure that the film will rotate with the spool as I turn it, using the winding knob and underneath the camera. Once the film took hold, um, I turned the knob a little bit more just to secure the film in place, and then I closed the camera. Then you'll have to pull on this switch here as you continue to wind the rest of the film into the take-up spool. As you're doing this, you should be able to see that the numbers are going up from E to 36. And you just keep on winding this and at some point you will feel a resistance from the film. Make sure you don't pull too hard because otherwise you risk pulling the film out of the canister. Now you can wind the film and take some shots. Here I just made sure that the flash still works. Um, it's powered by a AA battery somewhere in the bottom. Also, since I basically touched all the parts of the camera while reloading it, I made sure to clean the lens just in case it got fogged up by my fingerprints. So far, it seems like the camera is working again. And I guess that's it for this video. Um, I will have to go out again and take some more photos using this reloaded camera. And I will create a video update to show you the photos that I took. Um, who knows, maybe there will be light leaks. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. And I will try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And yeah, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys next time. Cheers.